Welcome to this tutorial on resizing the ext4 root partition live on Linux without unmounting it. Managing hard drive partitions can often require a reboot or using an external environment, but in some cases, that's just not practical. Before we dive in, a word of caution. Resizing the root partition on a live system carries a high risk of data loss. This procedure is best suited for systems where a snapshot or backup has been made beforehand, such as in cloud environments or when you have reliable recovery measures in place. Proceeding without a backup could lead to irreversible loss of data, so make sure to take necessary precautions. In this step-by-step -step guide, I'll show you how to safely resize the root partition while your system is running. Whether you're looking to extend the partition to use unallocated space or shrink it to make room for something else, this video will cover everything you need, from checking your partition scheme to resizing the XT4 file system and forcing a file system check. Let's get started. Let's start by checking the current size of the root partition. Use the df-h slash command to display the size, usage, and available space of the root partition. In this case, the root partition is around 60 gigabytes. Next, let's use the sudo fdisk-l command to check the disk size. Here, the total size of the disk is 100 gigabytes, but only around 60 gigabytes is allocated to the root partition SDA3. The remaining space is unallocated and can be used to extend the root partition. Note that the boot partitions, SDA1 and SDA2, should be left untouched. We first attempt to unmount the root partition using sudo umount forward slash, but as expected, it's not possible because the root partition is actively in use. Instead, we proceed by opening the fdisk utility with sudo fdisk slash dev slash sda, where sda is the disk containing the root partition. Be cautious. Repartitioning a mounted disk is risky, and any errors could lead to data loss. Inside the fdisk tool, use the p command to print the current partition table. This table provides crucial details about your disk's partitions. Pay close attention to the starting sector of the root partition. In this case, it's 1054720. This starting sector must remain the same during resizing to ensure the system continues to function correctly. The ending sector, currently 12582701, will change as we adjust the partition size. Keeping these values accurate is essential for a successful resize. Next, we delete the root partition and prepare to recreate it with the desired size. Use the D command in fdisk and when prompted, enter the partition number, in this case, three, which corresponds to the root partition. Be careful to select the correct partition number for your setup, as deleting the wrong partition could cause irreversible damage. Once deleted, we'll proceed to recreate the partition with the updated size. In the next step, we recreate the root partition with the desired size. Use the end command in fdisk to create a new partition, assigning it the same number as the original, in this case 3. When prompted, ensure the starting sector remains unchanged by pressing enter to accept the default value 1054720. For the last sector, press enter again to use the default, which spans the entire available space. If you are prompted with the message, partition number 3 contains an ext4 signature. Do you want to remove the signature? Select N for no to preserve the existing data structure. Now we verify the changes made to the partition table. Use the p command in fdisk to print the updated partition table. Confirm that the root partition, now listed as sda3, reflects the desired size. In this example, the size has been updated to 99.5 gigabytes. This ensures the resizing operation has been staged correctly. Remember, the changes are still in memory and need to be written to the disk in the next steps. Now that the partition table is updated, double check the output to ensure everything is correct. Use the W command in fdisk to write the changes to disk and finalize the partition resizing. After that, Create an empty file named forcefsck using the sudo touch forward slash forcefsck command. This ensures a file system check is performed on the next reboot. Finally, reboot the system with the reboot command to remount the root partition with its new size and apply the changes. While we wait for the reboot, here's an interesting fact. 
The ext4 file system, commonly used in Linux, supports volumes up to 1 exabyte, that's 1 million terabytes, and individual file sizes up to 16 terabytes. This scalability is a key reason it's so widely used for servers and storage systems. Once the system has rebooted, start by verifying the current size of the root partition with the df-h command. You'll notice the partition size hasn't yet been updated to reflect the changes. To extend the file system and utilize the new space, use the resize2fs command followed by the device path of your root partition, such as sda3 in this example. In the final step, run the df-h command once again to confirm the changes. As shown, the root partition has now been resized to the new size of 98 gigabytes, successfully utilizing the additional space. To confirm further details about the resize file system, use the sudo tune2fs-l command. This provides detailed information about the ext4 file system, including block size, reserved blocks, and other critical attributes. With this, we've completed the process of resizing an ext4 root partition live on Linux without unmounting. Remember, this process carries risks, so always ensure you have backups or snapshots beforehand. Thank you for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Linux tips and tutorials. See you in the next video.